Hello and welcome. Today, we're going to talk about the first horseman of the apocalypse that Gottman calls, you know, it's the four characteristics that ca cannot be in it in relationships because it ends the relationship. And that's why it got that name, the horseman of the apocalypse, the four things that destroys any relationship within five years. Yeah, you want to know what it is, right? So already, you, you can already read it in the title. Criticism, yeah, <laughs> the worst thing. Actually, he calls it one of the worst things, really, that destroys every relationship. And so thank you for being with me. Please share the content. Please make comments. Please save it. You know, brainwash yourself with this stuff so you learn how to act properly in your relationships. Be able to give love and receive love and be there for the people that you need and want. So, already, let's get on to it, right? The four horsemen of the apocalypse. So, um, the first one, criticism. Um, so, wh what happens is in criticism is that when we are criticizing, we are explain we are explaining our feelings through other people's behavior okay so we are explaining it through okay so you do this you're you're because and then and so i instead of saying i feel something you say you are that right which then takes a person to a place of defensiveness because what you're doing is that you're calling them something. You're putting them in a position to defend or attack back or distance, right? So examining the environment for people's transactions, the mistakes to explain your annoyance. It's not fair. So what happens is that we're, in this case, we are acting as in the what we call the trauma reactions based on okay so whenever a child is born in a house that is traumatic and is dangerous and is full of threats the child they he they he learns very fast not to be in harm's way he learns not to you know react in a particular way that will make his drug addict dad to be mean or break uh, or hit mom or break things in house so or he learns to always be observant. So he has to observe. He sees how mom is reacting. So you know it's the danger is coming. He sees how dad is react reacting. So he knows danger is coming. So if he comes home talking in a particular way, smelling in a particular way, he knows this threat, I know what to do. So he prepares for the threat. So what this child, this this kid, and if you're born in a household like this, you know that you live in a place where you have to always look around. You never learn to look inside. You never learn to see how you're feeling about this, what's going to happen, how can you react differently, what's plan B, you know, you always react, um, learn to react, not to act, right? So um, Brené Brown, she calls criticism the blaming. And there's a, the cutest video called Blamer. And you just put Brené Brown and you put Blamer on YouTube and you watch it later. Not now, stay here with me. <laughs> and you will see clearly that she was a big blamer. And not only that, that we tend to do that because we're always looking for the villain. If it's not you, it's me. If it's not me, it's me then it's probably you, right? And when we are blaming, we are actually unloading discomfort and guilt and shame, right? We're unloading the anger that is within us, right? But we're not being vulnerable. It's not from a vulnerable place, it's from a place of anger, it's from a place of pushing away. You actually, you're trying to protest, you know, the love that you're not getting, but you're actually pushing away. You're not pulling in, right? So, um, when we are talking about what is um what the person did to us we're not talking about our sadness we're not talking about what that means to us we're not saying you know how deep that matters to us we're actually attacking um so what i can tell you is for example an example one thing that people usually say oh 
you are insensitive. You don't care about our special day. You don't even, you don't really love me. That's an attack, right? But if you were to say from a vulnerable place, you'd say something, you know, if you were brave enough to say it from, from a place of sadness, which is what's really happening. You're sad about this. You could say, I'm so sad to hear or to know that you didn't even remember a special day. It, it's so important to me and I had great hopes for today. I had expectations um, and I, I really wanted it to be different. I, I really was expecting you to kind of do something. And the person there, they have an opportunity not only to hear your heart, the real part of your heart, right? The sad part of your heart, but also they are going to be engaged. You know, if he, see, he or she hears sadness in that way, you know, the real you, they come and they want to engage. They just want to come and hug you and be there for you. But if you're attacking, do you think they want to be close? Nope. Where is the door, right? <laughs> Where is the door? Let me find it. I need to leave. <laughs> So, you know, our culture is that culture of scarcity, 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 Sorry. scarcity. So what, okay, so I'm going to explain scarcity for you, what it means in this uh, particular way of looking at it. Uh, Brene Brown writes a book called The Power of Imperfection or something like that. The Power of Imperfection, I think is the name. So, because I read it, I have it in, in Portuguese, so. Anyways, you find out. She has a lot of great books. They're, oh, Daring Greatly. Read Daring Greatly. It's awesome. All right. So in this book, um, Brene Brown explains that our this scarcity, scarcity, this lack that we feel all the time is actually cultural. We are in a culture of scarcity, which means... Um, what what scarcity am I talking about? Let me make it clear to you. It's not like the opposite of scarcity is like to have a lot. No, um, the opposite because they are both in the same plate. There, they, they mean the same thing. The opposite of this scarcity is uh, the opposite of that would be feeling worthy. Um, to feel like you're enough. We are in a culture of always feeling not enough, not enough, not good enough. So either you're not good enough in your marriage or as a mom or as a dad or as a um, 30 year old or as a, you know, whatever, a Christian or a Catholic, whatever. So this culture of not feeling enough, you know, is it's everywhere and we learn to put up these masks that everything is okay even in media even in you know we learn to only show what is good what is perfect what looks right for the culture so that you are accepted so that you feel like you belong right but none of us are feeling enough for who we are even in our weakness because it's not acceptable to be weak it's not acceptable to cry. It's not acceptable to be vulnerable. It's as though we weren't, we're not even human. It's as though, you know, we're not supposed to be that weak. I, um, the other day, my, my aunt who was very, very close to me. I love her so much. She's like a mom to me. And she, she got upset with me about something. It's, it was not anything big, but she got very upset. And she's one of those impulsive, loving people. I love her so much, and she's so real. I like people that are real, <laughs> even if she's impulsive. <laughs> and um, she's like, I forget that I exist. I'm so mad at you. You did this. And I just forgot to mention something to her. That's all. <laughs> but anyways, so then she said, and then I started crying right away. I was like, I don't, I can't lose you. I can't. I can't. I can't, I cannot not have you in my life. Don't do, don't do that. You know I don't do these things on per, in per, on purpose. I am a very forgetful person. Please forgive me. And I was in tears. And her reaction right away was, "Don't be that weak. Don't cry right away. Don't don't show your weakness." And I was, and she has that mentality still of if it you're crying you're weak. No, this is real. This is who I am. 
I am real with you if you have my heart, right? If you are one of those people that only criticize, then, or you only have critics in your life, then you should not show your heart to them because they're going to use it uh, to hurt you, right? But if you are that, uh, if you have people that can hold your heart, if you have people that care, that have shown time and time again that they care about you, you should show them who you really are, what you really feel. When you are upset, you know, when you're sad, be real. That's what being real is about. You know, in Brazil, there is a, a way of saying this, you know, to be real, to be vulnerable. They call it to be resolved. That's a nice way of saying, like, you're resolved, right? And I love that about, you know, the way we say that in my language. Uh, you're just resolved. You're complete. You And it's it doesn't mean... To be a resolved person is not about being perfect. To be a resolved person is to accept yourself for who you are, which is already a big thing with a culture of filters and um, looking and trying to show that you are perfect and everything's perfect and you're always sunshine mood and everything, you know. That's already a big thing, just self-acceptance. Second would be... Um, acceptance with your imperfections and your qualities right um also understand if you're a resolved person you understand that you gotta get better you're always looking to be better and you have to work on yourself to, to pr improve so ask for forgiveness accept the fact that you do make mistakes go after the relationships that you actually care about and fix it right that's vulnerable that's real. That's being resolved. Um, so it's, it's basically the ability to give love, to receive love, and also to love those who love you, you know, and hold their heart, you know, with honor. Honor your sadness, your weakness, you know, and theirs. We all have it. It's not like, you know, we don't. <laughs> Don't deny it. We all need people. Right? So, um, so the 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 most important element in this um, is that in and, and I think in the element of the scarcity of our society is the willingness to know that we are vulnerable. Right? If you want to break the scarcity in our, your lives, you know break this bondage of not feeling enough you need to accept your vulnerabilities have the embrace you know uh, your self-worth embrace your worthiness worthy you're worthy of love you're worthy to have a good family good friends you know and uh in 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 the book that that i said uh, daring greatly you know <clears throat> based on Brene brown studies uh, our society pushes us towards the scarcity, scarcity and this feeling that we're not enough, but we need to pay attention, right? And, and, and learn and observe that we need uh, to be real, you know? And to be real is to have courage, you know? There are no vulnerable um, attitudes in any, any, anywhere, anywhere in the world at any time, no time in the world ever that is not vulnerable and brave at the same time. If you want to be brave, you got to be vulnerable. This is a vulnerable thing that I'm doing today, right? And um, maybe you're talking to your partner tonight and telling them how much they matter to you and how much you cannot live without them it can be a very brave thing too. So maybe you could read that book. It's very good called uh, Daring Greatly, all right? Uh, it's a bestseller, so you might love it. <laughs> also, um, let's talk a little bit about um, what can we do with criticism, right? Because criticism gives us a sense of control. So whenever you find a villain, whenever you're looking for the fault, the bad guy, right? It gives you a sense, a resemblance of control. But we don't, the, the, we need to have control of what we say. We need to have control what we're doing to this relationship. We have to assume, uh, or assume, no, that's not the word in English. We have to 
take control of what we are doing to ourselves and to the other person, right? So today's tip, tip is uh, speak your intrinsic truth to your partner. And don't criticize, all right? Um, instead of saying, you are this or that, you say, I need this or that from you, right? I need love. I need attention. I need to feel important in your eyes. I need to know that you. I can count on you. And when that doesn't happen, I get devastated. Rather than criticizing, let's speak from the place that we need um, uh, of our needs and, and empathy, right? Just empathizing in the sense that you know that the other person is a human too. They have difficult days. They have their weaknesses. They have their fears and and. and you know, they, they, they too might not know how to communicate these things. We're all in the learning process, right? So what can we learn with criticism? As the, criti as the first night, right? Criticism is the first night, the first horseman of the apocalypse by Gottman. Um, criticism, um, if you put that at bay, if you stop criticizing and you speak your truth from a place of, of, of empathy and speaking your need and speaking that, showing that you're sad or you're fearful, you know, um, you actually push away all the other three horsemen really, really far away. They don't, they hardly ever come close. I will speak on the other three. So when the other one is defensiveness, the other one is contempt, and the other one is stonewalling, right? But I'm going to speak more on those in the next coming weeks, okay? And behind every complaint, every criticism, uh, there is a desire and a need. There's a longing, right? So to work towards constructive solutions and mutual fulfillment, you must make an effort to get rid of of the resentment and bitterness. So you need to work on uh, forgiveness. We spoke here about forgiveness uh, some lives before that, you know, a forgiveness is a daily decision, a daily decision that this person does not owe you anymore. It's paid, the bill is done, there's no invoices, it's done, right? So we need to look at the other person giving them also the benefit of the doubt, allowing them to fix, to be able to be able to fix the situation, allowing them to speak, hey, um, you know, I did not mean it like that. I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Allow it to be fixed. You know, if you come from a place of, I'm right, you're wrong, and shut up. <laughs> you're pushing people away. You're not going to bring them close like that, okay? And um, you should allow them to do it differently. Now, the secret to speaking kindly, to speak from a place of zeal in the relationship, speak from a place of love, right? Affection. Um, speak your, talk about your emotions, you know, from a real place, not from here, but from here. And um, ask yourself, what do I need from my partner right now? What is my need? What is the thing that I need from them that would be perfect, that would make this pain stop? If you don't know, maybe you should look for a therapist. <laughs> maybe me, I don't know. <laughs> but if I were to say look for an EFT therapist, because they are good. We get to the root of stuff faster. And also, make your intentions very clear in a respectful way, in an assertive way. Um, speak and avoid, when you speak, avoid um, needlessly hurting each other, right? Each other's feelings. It is imperative that you express your feelings fully, even when it's difficult to be vulnerable. Sometimes it's very hard to say, I need you. Just that phrase, I need you. I need you so much. And even to say it is so hard. Be that real with the person that you love. Usually they come towards you. You know? So some people don't know what to do with their pain. But if you redirect them, say, hey, look at my pain. 
I'm, this is not a victimizing thing. This is not. This is not a game. This is serious. I'm sad. Come to me. I need your presence. And so they get to come. They can come. That way, they will want to come. If you're not doing the push away, the criticism, the anger thing, right? So. Vulnerability offers an opportunity for intimacy and connection. Yeah. And instead of de defaming each other, the two of you can become a team and be able to soothe each other and comfort each other in love. Right? So feeling the we feeling, the partnership thing, right? Feeling that together we're better, we're stronger, right? Um, so it's so important to remember, I need you, you need me, and together we are stronger, and we are, right? Um, when we don't know how to speak kindly, ask people that know how to speak kindly. You know, I have a patient, I, I, call, her, I call her my sweetie, because she, everything she says, it sounds like it's coming out with little flowers, coming out of her mouth with little flowers, and, you know, uh, just rainbows and sunshine you know she speaks so sweetly so she calls me sweetie too you know just to be funny so um but i'm not I'm, I'm not that kind of person i was not brought up in a family like that i try my very best to be a sweetie <laughs> but naturally i'm not so i've been learning this over the years to be super sweet and kind when i speak my mind when i ask for things without criticism and so whenever I don't know how to say things, I ask friends that are good at this. They naturally just got the gifts. So I ask them, hey, how would I, how would I say this? How would I ask this better? Because this is what I need. And you learn. Also, you can ask your partner. Say, hey, I said it like this, and you said I said it in a, in a wrong way or in a mean way. How would I have said it better? I don't know. Teach me. I, I want to learn, you know, in a, from a humble place you know, and they might teach you really well what they want to hear from you, you know. And so the antidote to criticism is the truth, not the truth of whatever the person did and how mean they are, but the truth of how you really feel. That's the real truth, right? How you feel about what happened and your desire, what you actually need, what you long for in this relationship that truth <laughs> and that is the antidote to criticism um stay on our channel and tune in more and please send my stuff to other people so that instagram knows that this is a worthy thing you know the stuff that i give you is very very good i try my very best i always do good research you know i, I couldn't come last week or the week before because of the um, hold me tight workshop that was amazing but i was so so busy and tired and <laughs> but now i got to be here with you and if you want to sign up for my hold me tight workshop that i'm gonna do i'm planning september or october you can sign up on my site and you send me a message so that you can participate. I will do it here in Orlando. I'm going to have another one in Tampa, but it's not going to be open for the public only. It's a closed group already. So Proverbs 16, 16 says this. Wisdom is better than gold. And choosing understanding is better than silver. Let us honor wisdom and understanding more than we honor and respect and give time for silver and gold right that's what we are always working towards but we need to work towards wisdom and understanding and peace um please send like you know make comments uh, send it to people save my stuff so so you can help me please and and thank you thank you for helping supporting me and a big hug to all of you, and I'll see you next week with the second horseman of the apocalypse, the second thing that destroys every relationship within five years. Bye-bye.